there's a new kid on the block when it comes to live streaming on your mobile device. Stick around and I'll tell you all about it. Doug Hewson YT. Tech for content creation. G'day, it's Doug from Doug Hewson YouTube here. And today it's another live streaming app for your mobile device, whether it's iOS, Android, we're gonna be looking at an app called Prism Live Studio. Now this is an app with a difference. It's not just a live streaming app, it's a whole lot more than that. So we're gonna jump right on over and check it out. I'm gonna show you the features and it's got a little something for everyone. Let's go. G'day, we've jumped on over to my iPhone XR and we're gonna check out Prism Live Studio. Now you can see Prism Live Studio is the app with the black icon with the white triangles. Prism Live Studio, here we go. We're gonna fire it up and you can see first of all that I've got it in portrait mode because often people use their phones in portrait mode just using it purely for the demonstration. Yeah, you can certainly go landscape as well, no problem at all. All right, first of all, we're gonna look at point out the, the, all the buttons that you see here. First of all, up here, we've got a little uh, man icon that's just to access your account details and then all the back end stuff in regards to a couple of settings and a few things we'll have a look at in a sec. This little uh, circle flippy thing, it's basically to uh, change cameras. Very quickly, there we go. Changing cameras. And then you can see these three dots we're going to get to those three dots in just a second as well. We've got three circles there and a magic wand, the ready button. And then we've got these things here, live, video and photo. Basically, what it means is this app isn't just for live streaming. You can record uh, video and you can record and you can take photos with this app. And the reason why you want to use this app to take photo and that might be because of one of the extra features this app has which you'll see in a second okay let's have a look now in some of these options first of all looking at the settings basically here you see that i'm logged into my account you can see that there's some recording information from as an old live stream here from a few weeks ago. If I recorded some videos, that also show here. But let's go into the account. I can go in deeper details in the account. I can set my stream destinations. I'm connected to my uh, YouTube test channel. I can also go to Twitch, Periscope, and a few other minor streaming platforms. You've also got a video resolution currently set for 1080p this is just for default and I ha also have the option to conceal the watermark which is just the Prism Live Studio watermark which could appear on your stream if you're streaming with it you have the option to turn it off everything else on the bottom there is all the help privacy policy terms of use of the app and so forth let's get back out to where the nuts and bolts are now we're going to the three dots three dots is more settings we've got a mic on and off you want that on, otherwise if you talk, nobody will hear you. Uh, if you need to mute it, that's where you would mute it. Uh, view full screen, if I did that, that just reduces to a, a screen that shows you everything with a bit of a black border. But I prefer to use the full screen, so let's leave it in full screen. The flip front facing camera is to do with the camera that I'm using now, because it's facing me, front facing camera. Everything is looking mirrored, but if that is gonna distract me for whatever reason, I can just, change the setting and you can see it's just flipped it the writing is actually uh, the right way around now i'm going to flip that back because i prefer it in the mirror mode when i'm doing it so my right is on the right and my left is on the left and there's an option also there to save a video after streaming so if you do a stream you have if i had that option on it would actually uh, save a copy of that stream to the app now let's head to the bottom end this big ready button is basically what you press when you're ready to go live. I'll show you that at the end after I show you the other features. Those three circles. Basically what we have here is Instagram style filters. Uh, they're not exactly the same as the filters as Instagram, but as you know, it's, it's allowing you to um, add various like Vivid or what's this one? Loading up as a warm one. There's some cool ones different cool options. 
So it basically gives you different looks and feels uh, for your uh, live stream. Some film look. There's some black and white at the end here. Some monochrome. Let's turn all that off, shall we? Back to the regular default, what the camera's picking up. And that's all that's in that one. But here, the magic wand is where all the magic happens, as they say. We're tapping on the magic wand. You've got a whole bunch of selections across the bottom here for categories. The first one, of course, is the clock, which is the one that's showing now, which is recently used stuff. Uh, so that's self-explanatory. Let's go to the next one, which is, let's call them masks. We'll call them masks, but this is basically where you do the Snapchat style uh, augmented reality uh, overlay, like glasses or hats. Giddy up, cowboy. Uh, one, one that I really like is this one here put this one on because it's not only adding glasses but it's also adding look a beard it's adding a beard and it seems to shape my face quite well i call it the nick Demon in glasses look so you can you can check that out sometime let's clear that off next one along borders basically they're borders for the screen so we can bring up a border and you can see it gives it a nice little border there's a whole lot of options here I haven't tried this one what's this one Let's light it up. The first time you use it, this one's giving you like a lens flare deal. It's not really a border, but it's just applying a lot of lens flare. And this one's gonna give us like bokeh bubbles, you could call them. You see a bit of a lens flare slash bokeh bubbles. Uh, so various borders and effects that you can apply over top of your live stream or video as well. Next one are e emojis. Basically, if you tap on these, it pops up a random emoji action and for each button there's several different ones that pop up so if i click this one we get yeah it's a smiley thing bit of a, a party vibe if i press the same one again i get this thing popping out my head and if i tap it again i get this weird face and some of them have like two or three like that so interesting so they're all all have different ones depending on the mood you can see they're all based on moods next this is what i call this is like the the, the tap animations, I would call them. Uh, some of the big ones, first of all, the full screen. So if I say load one up here, give it a few seconds to load. You see it says tap on screen. So as I tap on screen, it's like a ha ha ha. Just, it's a full screen sort of animated overlay. Uh, we could probably add some, I think this one's like a fireworks type one. So if I tap on this one, yeah, we've got some fireworks going on. Now there's ones where that are location dependent on where you tap them so let's let's load one of those i think this is one of those so if i tap here i get exclamation mark if i tap up here i get that there i can add multiple at the same time so you got options like that as well next you're able to draw i'm just gonna make that line thicker so i can just start drawing on the screen live uh, i can change the color i can change the thickness I can make it glow. That's a white line with a bit of a glow. If it's a bit thicker, you can probably tell better. Let's add a yellow glow. You can see the glow around that one. Change it back to normal, then it's yellow. Let's go to red. You can see I'm just adding layer upon layer. I can use the undo to take off the last one, or I can hit the trash to just clear the screen totally. So self-explanatory drawing on the screen. Now, finally, the last one is actually adding text, which you would expect you should be able to add text. So let's just add uh, welcome. Uh, the slider on the side is going to give us some sizing. And then when I'm done, I can also add a box around it or, a, or an opaque box. And then I can also justify it. But if I'm done with that, then what I can do is drag it. I can size it, turn it. I can do all that. I'm just gonna keep it level and I'm gonna put it at the bottom. I'm gonna leave it, I'm gonna leave it on there. I'm gonna leave it on there for the duration. You might say, well, that's pretty cool. Is that all it does? No. Remember these three uh, dots up here? We can swipe left and right. So if I swipe right, first of all, video only mode, swipe left for broadcast settings. I can swipe left again. That's the broadcast settings. Now, if I swipe right, I get to this. This is sort of a bit more of the powerhouse side of things. This is where we can bring in photos, video, music, 
and websites. Yes, websites. You have an area here called My Studio. This is where things you've selected have loaded. So these are pictures I've brought up previously. So I can go to Photos and pick a picture and load it in. Here's one I prepared earlier. I can pull a picture up. Now once I've pulled it in, I can actually tap on it. I can make it bigger, smaller. I can twist it, pinch and twist. I can move it around the screen so I can add, add photos. That's pretty cool. Go back in. The other thing you can add is video. Again, I can pull it in from the camera roll or here's one I prepared earlier. Once You can see the little play button on there. There's a play button also at the bottom of the screen. So I can put that there. Now, once I hit play, you'll actually hear the video. So I'm just gonna play it for just a second so you can see that actually. If you're a YouTuber and you live stream on a regular basis, you might have used Google Hangouts on air. If you bring Turn that off again. I'm going to get rid of that. You don't need to hear the whole thing. Next, music. This is a bit of a tricky one because it takes a few goes to tap it. There it is. It gives you two uh, music libraries. First of all, the built-in uh, Prism Live Studio music library. Uh, I have not yet checked on the status of this music, but I'm assuming that because they've provided it, they're providing it royalty-free, so you can use it in your streams. I will check on that and get back to you, put a little uh, bit of comp text on the bottom of the screen right now and I'll put more information in the description below. The other option here is on device music which is basically stuff from my iTunes library or your library of choice. Say so I don't know what Androids do but they have some sort of library where you've imported your personal music. So what you can do is bring any of that in but remember copyright you don't want to be bringing in any song willy-nilly so if you want to import a song from say uh, a service that you subscribe to like Epidemic Sound or from the YouTube Music Library, you can import it through iTunes and have it sitting in your iTunes on your phone and access it through here. Now finally is the web option. If I tap on web, it allows me to uh, plug in a URL, give it a title, and uh, I can display a web page basically. Now this is this is useful in, in, in interesting ways because of something like Streamlabs or Stream Elements and stuff like that. Now here's one I prepared earlier. I've got an event list widget. I'm gonna click on the three dots there. And oh no, I just brought it up. But you can see there's also an edit button there. So if I tap on that, I can go to edit. You can see that I've pasted a URL from stream from my Streamlabs uh, uh, personalized account there. Uh, I've given it a name and everything. But what it's given me is my event list. It's the last set, last eight events that have happened on my YouTube channel. So it's just displaying them up there. That can stay there for the duration. And as with all the other elements, I can move it around, etc. But I'm just gonna hide that right now. So they're the things that you can bring in through my studio. And obviously if I go into the edit mode, I can uh, remove those out of my studio once more. And I'm not gonna do that right now. I'm gonna bring that back to there. Actually, let's get rid of the welcome. Let's clear the screen. Now, finally, the last part is going live itself. If you want to go live, we're going down to the ready button. We're going to click on that. And you can see, because uh, I'm already linked to YouTube, it's saying, hey, uh, here's a title that, that you used last. Is that what you want to use? So I can actually go in there and edit the title. I'm not going to change it now. It's telling me currently if I stream, I'm going to my uh, test channel. With that little, if it shows me my channel icon, that's pretty cool. It's going to be unlisted and go out at 720p, uh, which is my preferred settings. And once I hit go live, that's going to go live. I'm not going to go live now for the demonstration, but believe me, I've tested it. It works. It is legit. Okay, I'm going to click cancel, go back in. And as I mentioned at the start, you can also you can have this set up in landscape. Uh, what will happen is some of the objects will actually rotate and some will stay where they are. And here's an example right now for you guys. And here it is in landscape mode. You can see these buttons are in the same spots that are over to the side. They've rotated in place. But the ones that were sort of top of the phone are now just over here. And then obviously the three dots were sliding left and right. Still sliding left and right. As you can see here, left and right and so forth. Still works the same way. It's just a slightly different layout. Uh, as you can see, back to me in portrait mode. And there it is. If you have any questions about Prism Live Studio, make sure you put them in the comments below and I'll endeavor to answer them to the best of my ability. Back to me.
Is Prism Live Studio something that you think you might want to use in the future? The best thing is that it's free so you can download it and check it out for yourself. No risk at all financially. So check it out and come back and let me know in the comments below how you find it. Is it going to be something that you might want to use in the future or is it a hard pass for you? I don't know. For me, I'm a little bit up in the air as to whether I would use this on an ongoing basis, but I'm going to keep playing with it and see if I can find an interesting use case because there's some interesting features that this one has that things like Streamlabs Mobile doesn't have and, uh, and other uh, live streaming apps. Now, if you like tutorials and walkthroughs and reviews like this one, make sure you give this a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel for more of that sort of thing. We talk about everything to do with tech for content creation. So look forward to seeing you in the next video. Catch you later. Subscribe to Dark Hughes and YT for more tech for content creation.